Oh, here, let me take care of this fucker. There. Mullet free. <laughs> Why is it coming back? Return of the mullet. Revenge of the mullet. Uh-huh. Hello, huge movie fanatic Nate, stopping on by, continuing my reviews of uh, my 2018, you know, Christmas uh, horror movies slash comedies movie reviews to close out the year of 2018. I'm coming at you today to review an absolutely atrocious movie, it's a quote-unquote comedy by the name of Office Christmas Party. I got this for probably um, $2.50. You know, you can pay $3 for this or buy any two of these didn't get them for five dollars so I'm pretty sure sometime this year probably spring or summer I picked this up along with another title and got them each for two dollars and fifty cents a piece and obviously you know expecting to watch it and review it this time of year and I just watched this movie and I'm just gonna review it I don't know why I bother with this kind of corporate comedy shit um, this far into the game after things like uh, after last year I think I bought and reviewed uh, the night before. That should have been my last one of these kind of corporate Christmas comedies but I was curious about this when it came out and I saw the trailer and stuff like that and picked it up for $2.50 and thought it'd be something to talk about this time of year. So having seen it um, I can now obviously review it. So Jason Bateman, of course, is, you know, one thing I hate about these, you know, 21st century court, what I call, what I've coined, uh, corporate comedies, meaning all these kind of movies that have all these, whatever, Saturday Night Live alumni and all these kind of familiar faces that keep popping up. Like, all the same people, if you've noticed, all the same people keep showing up in these, you know, corporate comedies and you just, these faces that you just, you, you, you're, you're like, you get just sick of these faces and you, you think to yourself, isn't there anyone else who can be funny? Not that these people are even funny, but you just get sick of seeing, like, the same, what I would regard as more or less, um, you know, un, uh, untalented faces pop up in these things, and I guess it's my own fault for continuing to watch these things. Of course, Jason Bateman is the star, and his character was just recently divorced at the beginning of this movie. I want to say his sister is played by Jennifer Aniston. Another thing about Jennifer Aniston, um, you know, it seems to be in all these kind of corporate comedies lately where she's swearing, and, you know, characters where she's swearing or just some kind of nasty character and she swears. It's like she feels like she's got to do these roles and do these movies and swear in movies to stay relevant or something like that. And it's just kind of like, I don't know, it'd be nice if she just did like some Hallmark movie or some kind of just decent movie. I wonder if she does any decent movies where she's just like some kind of, you know, soccer mom or anything like that who doesn't curse because, you know, fucking cursing just really gets on my nerves. Just kidding, that's a joke. But, you know, just seeing Jennifer Aniston, you know, be in these kind of movies, and this, you know, she's in more of these kind of things, and just, you know, aging and trying to, like I say, stay relevant. So I think Jason Bateman and Jennifer Aniston are, are, are siblings, I think, in this movie, and their dad had this big company or something like that that they, that he ran, and he's now dead, and I don't know, Jennifer Aniston I think is kind of the head honcho of the overall company where Jason Bateman I think is like the head honcho of this division or whatever, this particular location or something like that and Jennifer Aniston appears and is just like cancels the, you know, J Jason Bateman just starts the movie having been recently divorced. I don't know what the hell plot point that has to do with the movie but Jennifer Aniston appears to cancel the Christmas party. She's gonna, you know, having just closed a branch, I think, uh, you know, a branch of the business or whatever, and she's gonna cancel the Christmas party, and her her threat is she's gonna lay off 40% of the people at Jason Bateman's branch, from what I remember, unless she can, you know, have, unless Jason Bateman and their, the team at that particular branch can uh, land this uh, contract with this one character or whatever like that, so... Jason Bateman and the team at his branch then take it upon that, you know, Jennifer Anderson is said it's supposed to go on a plane to go to, I don't know what, some other country or something like that. So their plan is, with her out of the country, or supposed to be out of the country, they're going to, you know, throw this huge, big Christmas uh, bash to try to impress this client, or this, you know, this guy they want to get to be a client and close the deal on this guy so they can save 
you know, the jobs for the 40% of people who would be cut. So, I mean, so that's a, basically the, the plot, if you want to call it that, of this movie. And there's another subplot where this hot chick and Jason Bateman, this hot chick's got this internet everywhere idea, which is like, oh, we can have internet just based on the power cables or something and, you know, that, that run everywhere. I mean, there's power cables everywhere. So I can, I'm working on this algorithm or this thing, I'm a Bob, to, you know, work on this internet everywhere idea. Um, so that's something that comes into play later on towards the end of the movie. So as I said, uh, some point in the movie, maybe 30, you know, maybe the one third of the way through or something like that, they uh, go talk to this client he's not interested in. At that point, they realize that uh, where they're going to try to, you know, throw him this, you know, throw this huge office Christmas party to, and invite him to try to impress him and show him how great of a company they are. I want to say, you know, the first third of this movie is actually okay. It kind of reminded me of R-rated movies from the 80s, like Planes, Trains, and Automobiles and stuff. I was actually digging the first third of this movie for the most part, where it was kind of like, you know, the, 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 the groundwork for the movie is laid down with Jennifer Aniston's character threatening this thing, and then, you know, them having to kind of prepare for the office party. Everything, like, maybe the first third of this movie, I think, is relatively okay. Not to say that it's amazing. But it did, as I said, it did kind of remind me of the old rated R comedies from the 80s and maybe the 90s and stuff. Um, and I was actually surprised the first third of the movie. However, where the movie really starts to fall apart for me is when the actual office Christmas party actually starts. And I don't know, I should have taken note, it doesn't really matter. Maybe the par party starts maybe at the halfway mark of the movie or, not, or something like that. But just like so many of these kind of corporate comedy movies and stuff that are being produced now in the 21st century, um, you know, obviously when the, oh, and by the way, I mean, this, this version I've seen and own and am reviewing is the rated R version. Obviously there's an unrated version as well that came out. So I'm just reviewing the R rated version. I can't believe a lot of this stuff even made it into the R rated version. It's really nasty, but obviously, as I was saying, you know, the movie completely falls apart for me once the quote unquote office party starts and all this kind of nasty stuff where you got this guy I'm not even going to mention that all I'll say about that is just the eggnog coming out of this frozen icicle thing and the guy putting his mouth on it and just all kinds of na you know that's something I'm really surprised made it into an R-rated version just so much just nasty stuff obviously the guy that they're trying to close the deal on you know, to get the, you know, the whatever, the contract so they can keep the 40, so they can keep everyone's job shows up and at some point he ends up getting cocaine blown in his face from this, you know, snowmaker machine or, you know, that's accidentally a bag of cocaine got put on there and, you know, it's just such, just, just deplorable at the risk of sounding like a PTA member or something like that, it, you know, I'm not some kind of, you know, virginal you know, guy or anything like that, but I am, I am, I like to think I'm kind of classy, you know, and kind of decent and, you know, decent minded and not a fucking pervert, uh, or freak show. <laughs> so, when you see a movie like this, then this shit's supposed to be funny, where all this, you know, chaos and pandemonium's happening, just unspeakable shit at this office party that you just think, how would anyone, you know, behind the making of this movie ever think of this nasty shit? You just get... This movie actually almost, you know, almost made me sick to my stomach, to be honest, and just really, you know, some movies just um, really kill, kill my spirits and just kind of make, you know, I don't know, just make me cry for humanity or at least the humanity that, that put this movie together and shit. So everything goes to shit, you know, obviously the, the guy they want to, you know, impress and shit after cocaine's blown in his face he's all wild and crazy doing all this and that and gets himself hurt and shit and you know once the party just really starts to wear down at the last bits of the party these the main characters get out on the road and drunk and driving around and i think someone crashes a car into some something that you know like kills the the freaking power of the internet for the whole city i think this oh this takes place in chicago i think which was kind of cool because that they did like I don't know if it's it, the winter looks good enough in this movie where I don't I don't even know if it's real or fake winter that's how good the winter kind of winter you know exterior winter looking scenes are 
Um, unlike that one movie the night before, which was like filmed during July and just all fake winter or whatever. But, um, you know, they end up, end up ruining the internet for the whole city and which of course is a convenient, you know, opportunity for this hot chick to try her internet everywhere idea, which, you know, is something that, another thing that, you know, she wanted to finalize so she could make some money on it or get some revenue going from that idea with this and that and stuff and of course the internet breaks and of course she's able to use the try that internet everywhere idea because you can't really try it with it with it with internet around so obviously you'd almost have to go out into the well you can't, can't really do it in the country because there's not power lines but you know what i'm saying her argument was you can't test this out when the internet grid is working so you know they needed this perfect scenario of the internet to go down in the city so she could try it of course she tries it of course it works yay 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 whoop-de-doo big deal and of course i think like so many times i mean obviously you know th throughout the movie there's whatever into innuendo with this hot chick and the jason bateman character so i think they kind of obviously hook up towards the end of the movie i think it was just made no sense whatsoever that bateman was like just recently divorced at the beginning of the movie i mean that I don't know, that didn't even need to happen, but it, I guess it wasn't a big deal. So as I said, closing up this review, as I said, the movie started maybe the first third or so, or the first 20, 25 minutes or so of this movie was actually okay. And then once the party, you know, and then like looking around for stuff for the party was kind of fun. And But once the party started, man, you can just forget about it. You enter the realm of just deplorable vision. I mean, they should have said the, you know, Christmas office party filmed in deplorable vision, you know, deplorable O vision or something like that. Um, it's not gornography, it's deplornography. It's just absolutely, you know, in my opinion, just in my humble opinion, just absolutely just nasty, not funny shit. And I don't think there was one moment, which is more often the case than not with these 21st century corporate comedies, I don't think there was one moment where I went like, heh. I mean, even did that. You know, you just sit through this supposed comedy with just stone face, like, actually not stone face. The stone face went from this. To like get through them as the movie progressed, it just went, you know, and just got my favorite expression just got more hor horrificified as the movie wore on. So um, the movie started as actually probably a one star out of four star movies, but by the or started as a one star movie, but as the movie wore on, by the end of it, you know, I was still amazingly still conscious when the credits rolled. And that all said and done at the end of those movie, it's a zero. I'm going to give it zero out of four stars for Christmas office party. Is that what it is? Office Christmas party, rather. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. The words are interchangeable. It's, it's party office Christmas. Zero stars out of four stars for this absolutely deplorable piece of corporate comedy, you know, dung. You know, it's Christmas dung is what it is, you know, just a lump. A, yeah, a lump of, I'm going to, yeah, a lump of Christmas dung. Um is what this movie is so uh i would i would highly recommend keeping keeping you know your distance from this movie or just watch the first 20 or 25 minutes and then turn it off but uh, again jennifer aniston i mean there's got to be other roles for you except for being in these movies uh because i actually saw horrible bosses i got the blu-ray of that for three dollars it was this year or last year or something like that it was so horrible that i didn't even fucking bother reviewing it um, that's another Jennifer Aniston, Jason Bateman movie, and, you know, she was, in that movie, she's, you know, again, some kind of character that's all, you know, whatever, and sexy, or, you know, you know, some nympho character, it's just like, the, you know, I feel like she's got, she, she, she thinks she has to do these roles to try to stay relevant, and it's just like, you know what, go play a nun, you know, go be a soccer mom in a Hallmark movie, you know, do something different, because all of this, you know, freaking rated R movies and just swearing and just being, you know, just aging sex pot characters is just really has gotten old by this point. And I've only seen like two of these things that she's done and it's already old for me. So thank you very much for watching this review and as always, we'll catch you on the next one.